What's up guys, Dave Mate from Yerba Mate Land and today we're talking about one of my favorite brands of Yerba Mate, Cruz de Malta. In this particular brand for a few years now I think it was about 2010 uh, maybe late 2009 when I was living in Argentina when I first tried this mate I think I bought a pack from a store but my first real real experience of Cruz de Malta is when I was uh, visiting some family members in Italy and I was looking for mate I, I ran out of mate so I was looking to buy some and I was with my cousin in Milan and we finally found this little uh, tea shop and what do you know on the top shelf in that tea shop they had a box of none other Cruz de Malta so I was really stoked about that I went back to uh, the hotel we were staying at and I just brewed up some Cruz de Malta and I kinda just fell in love with it that was probably spring 2010 and I've been drinking it ever since then. Uh, it's a very uh, unique mate. It's special to me. Uh, it's pretty much has been a part of my entire mate experience as I've been drinking mate for over five years now. And uh, I think it's a mate that if you haven't tried it before, uh, you'd like it. The interesting thing about Cruz de Malta is that it's sort of a hybrid mate in terms of taste profile. Uh, think of Canarias and think of a mate like a manda or a mate like uh, even Krauss Organica traditional uh, Argentine brands and it's kind of a fusion of flavors between the a full body mate and a light to medium body mate so what you have is a sort of uh, light to medium body mate that has the robustness of a full body mate but it's not quite full it's not quite uh, over the top like a, like a Canarias Mate or a Baldo Mate, those sort of typical Uruguayan and Brazilian Mates that just explode with flavor. Uh, Cruz de Malta is sort of in between the two, which is why I find it very interesting. Now the thing about Cruz is that it has a very unique taste profile. Uh, a lot of Argentine Mates uh, sort of taste the same. You know, a lot of uh, Mates that come from the big companies in Argentina Yes, there are uh, a lot of varieties in taste, but sometimes you get a lot of mate that just tastes very, very similar. Uh, that's not the case with Cruz de Malta. It has its own signature taste. Uh, it's a light to medium bodied, but you're going to pick up on some smoky notes, some woody notes. Uh, and then you're going to get what makes it very interesting is that you get this sort of soil taste in your mouth, this sort of uh, mushroom, this sort of uh, almost like a slight little... I don't want to say barbecue because it's not a roasted mate, but you're definitely going to get some bold, smoky taste profiles in it. And there are some slight floral notes, uh, nothing like uh, La Merced Organica or other brands that, if from Paraguay as well, that have that sort of floral notes. You get a little bit of that, but not too much. Uh, the cut of this mate, let's talk about it. This mate is interesting because it has a lot of uh, polvo. Polvo is the powder. Uh, it has a moderate amount of the palos. The palos are the white twigs. And then it has a ton of the leafy cut material. Uh, it's a very sort of uh, balanced cut, I would say. Not too much polvo, not too much palos, um, and not too many uh, cut leaves. So it's very balanced like that. Uh, the nose, very sweet. When I smell this mate, I think of uh, Pipore. Pipore has a very kind of sweet nose to it, a very sweet scent to it. Uh, Cruz de Malta also has a very sweet scent to it. Just has a very sweet but also green scent to it. Interestingly, I'm picking up on some marshmallow as well. Some cinnamon as well.
yeah i would say some floral notes some cinnamon some marshmallow and definitely some soil some very dank black soil that's what makes this mate interesting it has a lot of different smells going on with it a lot of different scents uh and it kind of tastes like what it smells like very dank very uh soily kind of like fresh hummus soil and then it just has that little finish of smoke slight finish of smoke not overwhelming and then it comes in the undertones of the floral aspects of it the sort of floral floral slight hints of marshmallow very interesting brand uh, the cycles uh, I would say it's a medium cycle you gotta get a good 10 to 12 uh, turns of each mate so when I talk about the cycles that basically means how many times you're gonna be able to uh, draw from each side of the gourd so uh, you're gonna get about 10 to 12 cycles on this side of the gourd and then what you do is you take out the bombisha and you put it on the other side and then this becomes the new water hole and there you go you get another 10 to 12 cycles um, but the cycle aspect of it the cycle length really take it as a grain of salt because some people such as myself I really like the transition of mate that starts off strong and then over time becomes very very mellow uh, I like that some people the second it starts to get mellow they, they switch it that's not really me I used to do that but I kind of like to appreciate the subtle refined taste of mate that you can only really obtain when the mate begins to become weakened or what you would say in Spanish lavado which means weakened or washed or becoming very light it's a very interesting mate can't go wrong with it. Cruz de Malta. Medium bodied, medium cycle, floral nose, floral taste characteristics. Comes from northern Argentina, grown in the Misiones region, the uppermost region of Argentina. Uh, it's a very solid mate. You can't go wrong. Uh, at one point, before I started the entire mate organization, Circle of Drink, and now YerbaMateLand.com, I was drinking Cruz de Malta. That was my mainstay mate for at least a year or so, maybe longer. Uh, this was the mate that I just kept on coming back to because it had that kick. It had that sort of, you know, refined, muscular taste that I was used to. So, uh, if you're in the mood for a mate that's not too strong, not full-bodied like Canarius or Galaxy or Baldo, uh, or the other Brazilian Uruguayan brands and if you're in the mood for a mate that's not too light like uh, La Merced uh, or say for instance some of the Paraguayan brands such as uh, Ascension or La Rubia uh, then I would definitely give Cruz de Malta a shot it's sort of the in-between hybrid of all those mates in terms of taste profile especially when you're dealing with the Argentine mate so give it a shot, guys. My name is Dave Mate from Your Mate Land. Today was a discussion on Cruz de Malta. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. And I really appreciate it, guys. Check us out at yerbamateland.com. Find us on Facebook. Find us on YouTube. Find us on Instagram. We're all over the internet. Uh, this is a community. We love Yerba Mate. We love drinking it. Uh, apart from the health benefits of Mate, such as clarity of mind, what I call creative clarity, just eases your mind lets you think properly, lets you just contemplate and meditate, gives you all the energy you need from the moment you wake up in the morning to the time you go to sleep at night. No crashing effects like coffee, no jittery effects like coffee. Uh, and you don't have to worry about all the negative health effects that you would get with coffee or drinking too much black tea, things like that. Forget about Red Bull, forget about the energy drinks. All you need is Yerba Mate. Uh, I swear by this stuff. I've been drinking it every single day for five years now. And honestly, I don't see any time that I wouldn't be drinking mate. It just works for me. It's a great herb to introduce into your diet. Uh, a lot of people replace coffee with it. A lot of people replace energy drinks with it. Uh, but apart from the health benefits, you're going to get the social benefits, the spiritual benefits, the metaphysical benefits. What does that mean? Well, mate just has a way of connecting you to people. I don't know how it does it. I call it magic. You drink this stuff. It connects you to people. It connects you to nature, the environment. Uh, this plant has been around for thousands of years, drunk by the Guarani tribe of Paraná, uh, which is an ancient tribe of South America. Uh, they've been drinking it for thousands of years. They prayed to the Mate gods. Uh, they still drink it to this day. 
Uh, it's been around uh, in written history since the Jesuits uh, entered the territory of the uh, Guarani, uh, probably in the, let's say, 1400s, uh, 1500s, and they turned mate into a cash crop of the time, turned into a, uh, a multi-million dollar crop, I'm talking the 1500s, uh, then Paraguay took over the entire industry for a couple hundred years, then Brazil took over the industry, then back in the 19, early 1900s, Argentina had a dominant effect on the industry where they started to actually grow a lot of yerba mate, bring in settlers from Europe, uh, give them a lot of land, and they started to cultivate. So mate is just one of those drinks. It has a lot of history, a lot of deep roots from South America. And now here we are, 2014. I'm in New York. You are wherever you are. And uh, mate is being shared all over the world from Europe to North America, obviously South America, South Africa, uh, all over. So many continents are drinking this stuff. Just try it out. Yerba Mate, a great brand to try. Cruz de Malta, can't go wrong. So thanks a lot, guys. Salud. Drink your mate. Peace.